Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back. What you just watched was a real-time internal combustion engine simulation that I've been working on for the past few months. Now, I've always been pretty disappointed with the quality of car engine sounds in games, and when I used to play PlayStation 2 back in the day and knew absolutely nothing about programming, I often wondered why it wasn't possible to just realistically simulate the entire engine. Well, I figured that it was finally time to answer this question for myself. So here's a prime example of one of these bad car engine sounds. Now I know that most of these are optimized for performance, so I don't expect them to be perfect, but I still think that they can be improved. But what exactly makes it bad in the first place? Well, first of all, engines sound different under different conditions. So for example, an engine is going to sound different when it's idling compared to when it's under heavy load or when it's decelerating, and I feel like this is often overlooked in a lot of these games. Engines also have non-linear response characteristics, and what I mean by this is that the gas pedal does not dictate a speed to the engine, like it might in the case of electric motors. It simply opens some throttle plates and allows the engine to freely choose its own speed, and this is obviously regulated by how much air is going into the engine. In real life, this looks kind of like this. Notice how the engine might take some time to react to that input, and there are a lot of complex factors that give every engine sort of a unique character. My goal with this project was to replicate all of this complexity in digital form and create a virtual engine that I can interact with in real time. So let me explain how this works. So the first thing is a rigid body simulator simulates all of the interactions between the internal components like the crankshaft and connecting rods and pistons. Usually this is called your rotating assembly. I wrote this physics engine a few months ago and I made a video about it if you're interested. Now I want to emphasize that this is not some sort of visualization. This is totally legit. It is a rigid body simulation. And just to prove it, I can remove some of the links and all of a sudden we have whatever this is. So in other words, all of the forces between the links, including things like inertia and even the sliding friction between the cylinder walls and the pistons are taken into consideration in this simulation. I also implemented a physically realistic fluid simulation to handle the airflow between the cylinders and the other parts of the engine. I tried to take as few shortcuts as possible, so there aren't really any tricks or shenanigans here. The air molecules and the bulk velocity of that air is simulated in a realistic way as it travels through the engine, and a physically accurate amount of energy is released when that fuel is burned. Even the speed of the flame propagation in the cylinder is very accurately simulated. This entire simulation, by the way, has to run at around 80,000 frames per second to remain stable, so it had to be heavily optimized. And I'll show you what happens if it runs any slower. Basically, your engine just grenades into the fourth dimension immediately. The pressure wave that is created in the exhaust system is sent directly to a separate thread that then converts it into an audio signal. The final audio signal consists of some plain white noise, a little bit of equalization, and a filter which approximates the sound propagation pattern within the exhaust system. So here's a demonstration starting with the base pressure wave which kind of sounds a little bit uninteresting. And once all of the added processing is there, you can see that it sounds a little bit more familiar. Yeah. 
The simulation is actually so accurate that it can predict horsepower curves given a set of engine specifications, usually to within 10%. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. These engine specifications are defined in a Piranha script where you can connect multiple individual components together to form a complete engine. Piranha is my own custom scripting language that I made, and I use it on some of my other projects as well. You can learn about it in my other videos on my channel. All right, so let's see a basic demonstration. We can start with a stock engine that you might find in a 1970s truck. Specifically, this is a 454, which stands for 454 cubic inches or 7.4 liters. I've actually built one of these myself, so I know quite a bit about them. All the parameters that I put into the simulation are taken from real world data. All right, first we'll press A to turn the ignition on, and then we'll press S to engage the starter, just like in a real engine. By pressing various keys on the keyboard, I can open or close the throttle, which of course causes the engine to change speeds. By pressing the D key, I can enable the dynamometer, so we can measure the torque and horsepower of this engine. If we look up the original figures given by GM in 1974, we can see that they are very close to the predicted values in the simulation. Even the curves are roughly the same shape, with both peak torque and peak power happening at roughly the same engine speed. Now, by just changing the parts in the engine, you can actually change the way that it sounds. So if I put in some high performance parts in a camshaft with a slightly different load profile, you can see that the engine both produces more power, but also sounds noticeably different. I did not change any of the audio synthesis settings. This is based only on the internal components of the engine. To get a better feeling for the power of the engine, I also implemented this vehicle simulation with a clutch, transmission, and drivetrain simulation. It also approximates the rolling resistance of the vehicle, as well as air resistance. In my opinion, the biggest improvement over many of the models that I've seen is the engine braking sound, which sounds really good. So engine braking or overrunning is when you run the engine faster than it should be given the throttle position, uh, which produces a sort of braking effect. And you can kind of think of it as like negative horsepower. And this also noticeably changes the tone of the engine. So far in this video, I've only shown V8 engines, but that's not the only thing that this simulator can do. Uh, it's actually completely generic, so you could simulate a V6, an inline four. You can even simulate uh, non-standard engine configurations, like a V3, or you could even have six cylinders on one side and four on the other. It doesn't really matter. Um, it can handle pretty much anything. So if you have any ideas for specific engines that you want me to test, uh, please write them in the comments, and uh, I'll definitely be making a follow-up video to this. Um, just to prove that it actually does work, I entered the parameters of this Kohler V-twin engine, um, and you typically find these things on sawmills or wood chippers and other industrial equipment. I'm very familiar with this particular engine in real life, and I can confirm that the simulation produces a very accurate replication of the sound, and the horsepower figures are pretty much exactly the same as in real life.
Now, as much as I would have liked to discuss all of the technical details of this project, there would have been just way too much to cover in a single video. I literally read entire textbooks while researching this, and I've also read a lot of research papers. I genuinely have no idea if anyone would even be interested in these details, uh, so please let me know if you are. Also, at the time of releasing this video, the code is open source on my GitHub, so check it out if you're interested. The link to that is in the description. I hope you guys liked the video, and thanks for watching.